Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We've talked about how a router boots up, and that's called the boot sequence specifically. And we looked at how the router will go through the post and then load up the bootstrap and then the iOS itself, and then finally an actual configuration file. Well, our discussion would not be complete if we didn't talk about the configuration register. And so that's what this tutorial is going to focus on. Now, the configuration register is a value, and it's so important to the boot sequence because it determines where the router will look for the iOS. So we know the router has a few different choices in terms of places to look. Well, the configuration register, depending on how it's set, will tell it where to look first, where to look second, and how to behave. So we're going to look into some of that behavior. And the configuration register is also important in terms of when the router finally does load the iOS and then it's ready to load a configuration file, well, maybe we don't want a configuration file to be loaded, and maybe we do. Depending on which way we want to go, the configuration register will tell the router what to do. Will it load a configuration file or not? And that can become very helpful. So we're going to take a look at that as well. And then finally, the configuration register is in charge of a lot of what you call low-level functions of the router. So, for example, the console line speed or perhaps some diagnostic information we can get from how the router will function. Those things are also controlled by the configuration register. So you can see this plays a, a vital role in the bringing up of a router. So we're going to look at some of the details. We're going to look at how to configure the configuration register, and then also how to verify the current value of a configuration register. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so let's look at some of the details about the configuration register. First, this is a 16-bit value, okay? And that means it's a two-byte value because there are eight bits in a byte. We have 16 bits, two bytes. And each one of these bits has a meaning to it. And so it's either turned on or turned off. Either we pay attention to it or we ignore it. Okay, so that's the first thing to know about it. It's a 16-bit value. Now, the way we express it, however, is a little bit different. The configuration register value is always expressed in hexadecimal. We don't actually show all the ones and zeros for each of the bit positions. You can think of this in terms of the subnet mask. You can actually write out all the bits, or you can convert it to a decimal value. Well, it's the same thing here. Think of the bits in terms of understanding uh, how the configuration register value is made up, but when you actually express it, it's expressed in hexadecimal. There is a default value for the configuration register, and that is 2102. So let's look at this value for, for a minute to get some more information about the register. So first we see 0x2102. Whenever you see the 0x, that simply means that the value that follows it is written in hexadecimal. So if you didn't have the 0x there and you saw 2102, I mean, that looks just like any decimal number as well, right? So uh, whenever you see 0x, think immediately that the value that follows is written in hexadecimal and not decimal. Now, if you have 16 bits, but we're only showing four um, digits here in the hexadecimal number, that means that each one of these is representing four bits. Okay, so 4 times 4, and we get 16 in total. Now, each one of these values will differ de depending on whether a bit is a 1 or a 0. Okay? So that's the makeup of the actual value itself. 16 bits, some are turned on, some are turned off, depending on how you want the router to behave. And then it's expressed in a hexadecimal value. By the way, each one of these four bit chunks is called a nibble. We're used to referring to eight bit chunks as a byte. Well, if you cut that in half, it's called a nibble. If you ever hear that, that's what it means. Now, the actual value itself is written into NVRAM. That's where it's stored, which means this will persist between reboots, right? Because anything in NVRAM is permanent, just like your configuration files will last between a reboot. It's the same thing with the configuration register value. Now, an important thing to note, the configuration register is only used when the router loads. 
And if you think about it, this should make sense because we talked about the boot sequence and the configuration register is responsible for the things we discussed, the choosing of where to load the iOS and whether or not to load a configuration file, among other things. That means all of this stuff happens in the very beginning phases of when you turn on a router or when you reload it. So the configuration value is applied. It's actually referenced and used when the router loads up. So if you make a change when the router's already booted up, well, that change in the configuration register will not take effect until you boot it up again, okay? Okay, so we mentioned we can change the value of the configuration register to alter the behavior of the router. So the command we use to do that is the config register command. The first thing to know about the config register command is after you issue it and you state a new value for the configuration register, you don't have to issue a write mem or a copy run start. This value is saved in NVRAM immediately. Well, why do we want to change the value? Well, going back to how we opened the tutorial, some examples would include perhaps a password recovery or if we want to alter the way the iOS is loaded. So for instance, a password recovery, in order to do that, and we don't get into all the details here, but if we were to change the configuration register value to 0x2142, remember the default value is 2102, by changing this particular value here, the router will ignore any of the configuration files you have in your NVRAM. So it'll load up and it's pretty much like a brand new router. It doesn't have any configuration file loaded. That way you can then access the router, you can get into privilege mode, and then you can go ahead and actually, if you want, copy the configuration file into the running memory and then change the passwords. It's a way to get back into the router if you ever lost your password. So that's one example of why you'd want to change the configuration register value. The other one might be um, you want some more control over how the router is choosing the iOS. So the very last field in the configuration register, this one here on the end, is known as the boot field. And depending on the value there, the router will look to different places. So for instance, if that value is a two, like it is here, the router will try to look at some of the boot commands in the configuration file and, and see what they say in terms of, hey, load this iOS or load that iOS. If none of them work or there are none present, then it'll just default and load the first iOS that it finds in flash memory. If the boot field is a 1, then the router will simply go straight to the flash memory and load the first iOS it finds. And then you can also set the boot value to 0. And in that case, it'll load just straight into the bootstrap. And if you're not familiar with the bootstrap, just go ahead and review the um, boot sequence tutorial on how the router boots up. But just a, a quick summary, that is like a, a, a miniature iOS that's used to uh, get the router just going in the beginning in order to help it load the full iOS. Well, there are some functions to the bootstrap uh, that we can use, so you may want to uh, boot directly into that. Okay, so those are a few other examples of uh, the kind of granularity you can get into with the configuration register value. An example could look like 0x2101. Again, this is the boot field. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these boot commands that we referenced. Okay, so why do we mention the boot system command? Well, quite simply, it's another way for us to affect how a router is loaded up in terms of the iOS, and it relates to the configuration register. So the boot values that we just talked about, the 0, the 1, or the 2, will tell the router where to look for a particular iOS to load. Well, you can then even fine-tune that with boot system commands. So remember, our default value is 2102. And that, too, tells the router to look for any boot commands in the configuration file, and they would only be there if you entered them. So some examples here would be boot system flash. You're just telling the router, 
to go ahead and just you know what go go look into the flash memory and and load the first value uh load the first iOS you find there or you could do something a bit more specific you can say go ahead and look in the flash memory but look for this specific iOS to load or you could do something like this don't look in the flash memory in fact we're going to load our iOS from a TFTP server and this is the file we want to load and this is the IP address of the TFTP server. Okay, so when your configuration register is in the default value, meaning it has a two in the boot field, it's going to look for these boot commands. And then you can go ahead and speci specify exactly what you want to load and where you want to load it from. Okay. Now that we've talked about the config register command and the actual value of the configuration register, let's see how we can look at that value and then change it if we want. So the command we use to verify the current configuration register value is the show version command. Now we've talked about show version um, explicitly in another tutorial. And one of the items covered is the configuration register. And here we see it at the very bottom of the output. So configuration register is 0x2102. So that means this router has been left in the default uh, configuration register value. Now, if I want to change it, we go into configuration mode. And the command we could type is config register and I'll show you the parameter there you can see it's a config register number and it's expressed in hexadecimal as we discussed you can see the 0x there so if I want to put on here 0x 2142 and then I jump out of configuration mode watch what happens now when we take a look at the show version command and by the way 2142 would be like I mentioned earlier, to ignore the configuration files on the next load of the router. So it would not load the startup config file. Now you can see the configuration register information at the bottom has changed. Not only does it tell us the current value, but it's going to tell us what the value will be at the next reload. So again, it's only important when the router is booting up, when it's been reloaded. Let's also take a look at some boot system commands since we talked about them. We have to go into configuration mode and we type boot system and I'll show you the parameters here. We can choose the word flash because we want to let's say specify a file from flash memory and then from here we would type out the iOS file name. Well how do you know what file name to type? Let's get out of configuration mode and issue the show flash command. And here you can see the file I have loaded on this particular router. So what I would do is go back into configuration mode, type your boot system command, tell it which memory source to look from, in this case it's flash, and then which file to load. So I'm just going to copy and paste this particular file like that. I can then show you in the running configuration, you can see here right at the top, our boot system flash command. So now, the next time the router loads, if the configuration register value tells it to look for a boot system command, it will find this command and load only this particular iOS. And that's helpful if I have perhaps one or more iOSs stored on the router, and I want to make sure that every time it's going to load a specific iOS because I want, say, specific features or specific bug fixes in this iOS to be loaded every time. Okay? All right, well, we've made it to the end of this tutorial, and to summarize what we covered, we now know about the configuration register value. Here it is written in hexadecimal, and we know that it's 16 bits, and we know about the boot field, and we know, generally speaking, the configuration register value controls some very important features of the router when it comes to booting up, like where to look for iOS images and in what order, whether or not it should pay attention to a configuration file or not, 
as well as some low-level um, functionality of the router, like will it pay attention to the brake key, or will it set the console line speed to one thing or another? Then we went ahead and took a look at the show version command, which enables us to verify the value not only of the current uh, configuration register, but also how it'll be the next time it loads. And remember, it's only significant when it loads the router. To change the value, we now know about the config register command. And if we want to go ahead and specify specific iOSs to be loaded, we now know we can use the boot system command in order to do that. Okay, so that's it. That is the configuration register. Thanks for watching.